Welcome to Energy Geek Speak with me, Christine Marguerite, a love of all energy. You have found me and us on our group YouTube channel, Evolve Within Love, or Evolve in Love, depending, depending how you want to break it down, how you want to say it. So here is a little addendum. Uh, I've been speaking about, well, welcome. I just want to say welcome. Uh, the, I've been doing a series on a particular technique that involve a certain level of angelic consciousness, energetic consciousness that we would name a kind of angel, perhaps many of us. Uh, and I realize that When I speak about techniques such as this, there's a lot happening. There's a lot going down in this technique that is beyond the basics, beyond freshman year, maybe even beyond year one in graduate school. <laughs> so I acknowledge that and I say that a lot. I wanted to backtrack just a little bit and talk about chakras. This word that we use, chakras. What are they? They are an energetic form specific to living beings. I speak almost exclusively about the human energy system, the HES, uh, a term coined by Barbara Ann Brennan of the Brennan School of Healing. So most of us at this point, I'm making this video in uh, 2020. By the year 2020, most of us know this term. Most of us, many of us, I wouldn't say most, many of us have heard this term for decades upon decades. For some of us, this term is new. We're like WTF chakra? I don't know. Chakra? Chakra? How do you say this? Shh. Akra. Shh, Akra. That's how I've been taught, and so I just keep going with that. Do you like my bumblebee? Mm -hmm. There he is. <laughs> spinning wheels of light. Chakra, wheel, chakra, spinning wheels of light, spinning wheels of consciousness. They are one structure of the body. There are energies and structures of energy deep to, which you may call more foundational to, us manifested as a human soul in a body marching around the planet. What we come to first are the concept of chakras. They're usable. There's a spiritual psychology to them. Uh, introduced to us by Jung. Jungian psychology was, I believe, the first psychology to really engage in this concept of different energetic areas of the body. Seven basic. We are now working maybe more with ten. But hold on, hold on. Before we even get to that, let's just talk about the seven basic ones. Each of them uh, have a color. Each of them have a tone, a symbol, perhaps a shape, depending. Are all of these things within these, it, they all have a location as well. And I'll show you that in a minute. So before we even start unpacking what these do, what they're about, are what these symbols and colors offering us is it descriptive of what is pre-existing or is it prescriptive? The colors, the symbols, the notions, 
encouraging and healing and holding an energy center. That's something that um, I would say maybe yes and both, both, not not either or, but both. It's something to take note of. Because of Jung and other texts that have come over from the East, it is an Eastern concept, uh, Hindu concept, I ought to say, perhaps some Buddhist traditions as well. If we go further, is that further East or is that way West? If we go into Japan, China, Korea, they're working with more meridians and there is an energetic body to meridians and minor chakras as well. So what is a chakra? What does it do? Well, multiple things. They are a way for manifestation to blossom and move into becoming. <laughs> it is a way for divine force energy which is huge mongus, imagine it is huge mongus to, if it were a car <laughs> or something like that, to downshift, transmute and downshift to function within form, within third dimensional form. Fourth dimensional, which is which abuts, fourth dimension is our mind emotions, mental states, not that they don't, not that our mental states and emotional states do not have physical correlates, they do. And, and our, phenom our, our, our phenomenological experience of them is more than just physical. And so that's a lot of what the spiritual psychology is going on. And I will offer indeed that each chakra, as it is explored, is a way to address our mental emotional health from a spiritual lens. For each chakra, each of the seven has a certain quality, a certain emotional quality, a certain evolutionary quality in terms of the growth of the mind, and other qualities associated. Concepts, philosophy for each. So I won't pull apart each of them because you could spend really an hour on each and I will give you some links to do that if you want to do that. Perhaps someday I will give my view. Each of them is a way, and I got this concept from Ken Wilber, I want to say. He had an article, I'm not sure if it was in a, it, 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 it did not become a full-on book, but it, it's an understanding of his that I adopted uh, about 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> Maybe 15, to be fair. I don't know, it was a while ago. Where spirit, where God force energy comes into a soul and then comes into a body. From the up, that's from the up down. From the down up, we have the energy of life force, of prana, of chi, of Gaia herself, creating, creating, manifesting form. So in a human body, and I could say all uh, living forms, but I'm going to stay with humans to not move into any confusion. Within humans, because there is a neocortex and there's a certain psychology with the neocortex. Although not all chakras are neocortex based or are not all rational, creative reasoning based. For sure, some are more survival based. It's a way for God to come into form. So as the body is being created, the energy of divine force, your higher self, your soul, you are a spark of the divine, pours into a body through certain structures. 
These structures are the meridians, power cords and currents, and the chakras themselves. So not only are each, is each center the locus, the starting point of a certain divine quality, energy, or emotion, it also receives from the environment, from the prana, from the chi, from your life, from mental food, from emotional food, from physical nourishment. They emanate energy and they receive energy. They transmute energy. So they do both. Some people will say that it's front to back. Um, so let me talk about what we understand uh, as the different structures. When we're talking about these wheels of light, like I said at first, that's a visual description of an energy center. And often with energy work, we're working with these visual images, which can sometimes be static. One, not everybody is a visual seer, thinker, understander. Two, nothing about your energy system, including your chakras, is static at all. Like this bumblebee back here, we draw pictures and we think wheel. It's it. It just, it's not flat, it's not 2D, 3D, it is multi-dimensional. Mo many, I would say most energy workers you go to will understand each chakra place, locale of the major seven. And there are minor ones that are online now that we're working a lot with. Oh, whoa. All right, I just went far ahead. They all work on multi multi-dimensionally 12 dimensions for example on the basic 3d 4d dimension we understand them most easily so we have one top of the head you mostly know this one in the in the middle of the forehead one in the throat one in the heart one in the solar plexus if i move back i can show you Ah, more solar plexus, right below the belly button, your pelvic bowl area, and then right between your legs, perhaps where the perineum is, though not exactly, um, is the last one. So I described them top down, how they are numbered, because we do talk about them as seven, is from down up. So the bottom, right between your legs, that's one. Right below your belly button in that pelvic bowl, two. Now I'm just talking areas. And I really, if you've noticed, I've mostly just referred to it as the front of the body. That, that's not how they function. They are front and back or three or and side, like a donut or a giant sphere, you might say. And the spheres overlap. They're not distinct, they bleed into each other. Each sphere also emanates a light or a mist of a particular color form or colored grid form, depending on the energy center and its function. Uh, so one at the base, base chakra, sacral chakra, Solar plexus chakra, that would be three. Fourth is the heart chakra. Throat chakra is fifth. Sixth chakra, forehead, third eye. You've often called it, heard it called third eye chakra. And the crown, crown chakra. So people will speak about them as having, and you heard me say that a little bit, as front and back. There is a power cord, a power current. So imagine this is your spine. It's not in your spine, it's maybe in front, maybe it, 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 it's, a, it's a different layer than your spine. So here's your spine, where am I gonna do it? Right here, spine, and then front and back. And it can look like two kind of cone shapes. Cone, cone, with a little, in, like a bow tie, <laughs> from looking from the side. Front of the chakra, 
back of the chakra, or back of the chakra, front, it doesn't matter. Two sides of the chakra, side A, side B. If you look, if you turned it towards the front, so you're looking at the front of the body or the back body, that's where on a fourth dimensional level, it will look like a spinning wheel or a multi-petaled flower, like a chrysanthemum or a rose. In the East, they call it lotus. And what they also say, some traditions in the Eastern Hindu tradition, will talk about each energy center having this visual form structure and as I'm describing it, right, it just looks like, it's just kind of like solid, like my mic. It's just kind of there. Meh. When I say spinning, that's much more accurate. Okay, so on the fourth dimension, if you look to it from the side, it will look like two, two microphones, two loudspeakers, two cones going out of a main power current. If you look at it face on, it looks like a spinning wheel or pedals, what have you. If we go to the fifth dimension, this is where it's get in, it gets interesting. They are more accurately spheres, even more accurately still, little torus fields. What's a torus field? Imagine in your mind a donut. Described and written around it a grid. There's a grid that goes moving down like a funnel. So here's the center of my donut. There's one part of the torus field that is just <laughs> spinning this way. And the opposite direction at a diagonal, it's also moving the other way. So that would mean that it shoots out both ends and takes in both ends. It's a torus field. I will do my best to find a little video of a torus field and I'll insert it here now. <laughs> really cute, right? So each chakra is, a, is on, on the fifth dimension. If you could see on the fifth dimension would be these torus fields, these spherical shapes. When we're looking at these, so if you didn't quite see the sphere, you would just see sort of this center tube on its side, perhaps. And if you looked at it front on, you would see sort of this spinning swirl. If you look down upon your, your spinning torus field donut, I'll find a shape of that and I'll put it right here. It looks like a spiral. It looks like a spirogram, spirograph, like when we were kids. This, that toy we used to play with, with the pen and it, you could make a little spinning thing. So that is how we have these different visuals of them, each a different color, each a different quality and feel. So as I'm speaking about this, I'm mostly just talking about the visual structure before that, I spoke about that it, it, it emanates and expresses energy, mental, emotional, spiritual energy. It also is nourished by energy. It also takes in energy. They have other functions as well. So as we move from the fifth to the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, these different dimensions. It will become less geometric. It will look less like a shape, less like a torus field, less like two cones, less 
like a spinning wheel uh, uh, or flower. And at a certain level, we'll start to, if you move all of your attention and all of your awareness into one center of energy, say the forehead, the third eye, and keep your concentration and your focus there so that everything else starts to melt away. It starts to shift and is less geometric, perceivable shape. The experience of it is almost like a field, like a, you step into a very large cavernous space, which may have colors, concepts as well, it simply opens up. Within that opening up, it's more about quality of consciousness. If you move from the fifth to the sixth, which is where we look at these grids and these numbers and these structures, and we move into these places, into these dimensions that are about abstract color, abstract sound, abstract spaciousness. Each chakra also has within it that aspect, that dimensional ex expressing itself on each dimension. And so it will look like a big field of open space. At another dimension, it will just appear as color or tone, sound. Another approach to understanding and working with these chakras is as portals. And a couple of people talk about them. One of my main teachers, Krista Ann Compton, talks about them as portals. Um, and she has reference from her own experience, as do we all, from this other book that I will name and place here once I find it. <laughs> and so we can step out if we immerse ourselves within one energy center so deeply, we begin to plummet and move through the different dimensions of that energy center. And it allows us to enter into a particular quality within a particular dimension. Cool, right? <laughs> So it functions that way in a more esoteric, mystical, spiritual approach. They are spiritual, mystical, esoteric tools to evolve and make connection with different kinds of evolutionary, spiritually evolutionary energy. So that's yet another approach to these energy centers. So I've been talking about the basic seven. There are minor ones as well. I've mentioned that each of the seven has a certain quality associated with it. Color, tone, feel, expression. The minor chakras do as well. Their function is more on a very basic third dimensional, fourth dimensional level of existence. They are supporting characters. They are supporting energy centers. What's interesting these days as spirituality, mysticism, evolution of a soul is growing leaps and bounds. And we begin to move into a fifth dimensional lived reality within the third. 
sixth dimensional, seventh dimensional, eighth dimensional within our muggle life. Which a lot of us are doing now. Not only do these basic seven chakras begin to be perceived differently, they may begin to morph together. For example, the lower chakras I mentioned, I mentioned solar plexus right below the belly button and then right between the legs, those lower three at a certain dimension of functioning and perceiving, they merge into one grounding kind of energy. Each of them have a mammalian and reptilian brain function, survival. Who am I in a community, in a tribe? How do I express myself? And who am I as an individual? All of these things begin to morph into one and begin to include a minor chakra, which has now become, within this more evolved sense, a bigger player, and perhaps more of a major chakra, the Earth Star Chakra. A lot of us have heard of that. It has a huge anchoring capacity and deals with a deeper deep to an energy system, deep to the chakra system that I've just been describing. There are other minor chakras in every joint of the body. There's an energy center. So we can call that a chakra. We'll just call it an energy center. Within each meridian or groove of the body, energy. Each system of the body, endocrine system, lymphatic system, digestive system, cardiovascular system, neurological nervous system, et cetera, et cetera, um, connective tissue, muscular system, uh, skeletal is connective tissue. Uh, they each have a purpose and, and an energy emanation, foundational structure and emanating outwards. But I forgot to mention, within, the, within these energy centers, I'm talking about them as things, right? And I did mention that they're movey, blobby. They move, they shift. <laughs> We're just talking about the basic perception of them. Uh, I didn't mention the concept of auras. So when I said they emanate energy that looks like mist, or color, or if we're doing the flower like a perfume frequency, that's, that's what we call that emanation, the light emanating out is the aura. That's the aura. <laughs> People thingify it and separate it. It's sort of part of. It's a in a way that you would separate the scent of a flower from the color and the appearance and the shape of a flower. It's really one expression of flowerness. Each chakra is one expression that includes the aura. So the minor chakras also have this emanating auric field around them. As I go on and I do more shows here on Energy Geek, you will hear me talking more about woo, moving around <laughs> the minor chakras because they are coming more into play. So primarily we function in the 3D and the 4D. The 4D is your mind. It's your dream space. Um, that conceptual, imaginal realm. Subtler details of that, uh, colors, tones, sounds, maths, <laughs> those are primary expressions within different dimensions. And I said each chakra has 
12, more than 12, but we often work with just the basic 12 dimensions. The same is true of the minor chakras. And as I've been saying, as we function beyond your basic 3D, 4D reality, and we begin to function from a five dimension, the fifth dimension, sixth dimension and seventh dimension, the minor chakras have more say, become more major. They're more apparent and activated in day-to-day, -day mundane life, daily functioning. Not that the seven basic aren't, but the seven basic, like I mentioned, third chakra, second chakra, base chakra, solar plexus, all the way down, can morph into one expression, one cohesive expression of love with a certain flavor. <laughs> and so others as well, others as well. So that sounds like things get less specific and less detailed. They, that it has not been my experience. I wanted to say they don't. And it's not that they don't, it has, it's depends on your view. In my experience, for example, when we talk about, when I was doing this here, <coughs> excuse me, we need some water, hold on. <coughs> hmm. We talk about the third eye, the sixth chakra, that has many layers and dimensions. That has a basic function of clear seeing and perceiving, conceptualizing. There are other minor chakras that are in the head itself that have been supporting this six chakra and in some ways maybe not even supporting they've been laying dormant and are now waking up with more vim and vigor and becoming more online and have a higher functioning in day-to-day -day life so i mentioned this because as i begin to talk about these more advanced techniques i will talk about the minor chakras and it's not that the basic seven aren't important. It's not that they can be ignored. It's not that on occasion, there isn't gonna be something going down in one of those, particularly if you're starting to clean deep old historical stuff, deep old ancestral clutter or past life, parallel life, influence, Often that will be in some of the more basic structures. Not always, not always, but we'll unpack that as we go on. So that's my little chat. That's my advancing your understanding of what chakras are. And perhaps, perhaps you already have this understanding. And perhaps you've never heard of a chakra before and you're like, gun. So I can give you some links that break down what the functions of the different chakras are. Perhaps in the future, I will talk about each. What I'm really interested in these days is what's coming online and what is something that there aren't a lot of books written about yet. And that's these energetic systems deep to the seven basic chakras which include what we call minor chakras. I keep using the word chakra. When I use the word chakra, please hear energy center. Hope that was helpful. I just wanted to break it down. There's a lot more to say about these. I just thought I would clarify just a bit. One of the terms that I'll be talking about a lot. All right. Thank you for joining me. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or need me to explicate a little bit more, 
if something was unclear, a little bit fuzzalicious, slow but fuzzy, let me know. And I'll unpack that a little bit more. <sighs> All right, you guys, energy geeks. Let your freak flag fly. Love you all. I'll catch on the flip. Thank you for joining me. Please check out all the other people here on Evolve Within Love and check out all of our offerings. Uh, I offer one-on-one -on -one sessions that you all know about. I offer meditation classes, which I have been saying. I'll have a meditation class in October. We'll see how it goes. My life has been crazy. I'm moving. So hello. We shall see. All right. I'm going to sign off now. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for supporting us. Please like it if you liked it. Please comment if you liked it. Please subscribe. Once you subscribe, I can do these live. And we can interact like a mofo. And really just like shake it down. And really talk about stuff. Okay, I love, love, love whoever you are. I love you. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs>